You're watching Tag TV. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 11th of August. Terrorist attack army post in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Three soldiers, two attackers killed in shootout. Pakistan's ousted Premier Imran Khan accuses government trying to create rift between his PTI party and army. And China announces new 15 billion rupees assistance to Nepal to invest in projects. And now for all the details. At least three soldiers lost their lives after terrorists attacked an army post in Rajori district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday, while two attackers were neutralized in the gunfight that ensued. The incident came amid heightened security ahead of India's Independence Day celebrations. Terrorists attacked an army post in Rajori district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory on Thursday, killing three soldiers while two attackers died in the shootout that came amid heightened security ahead of India Independence Day celebrations. The attack took place in the early hours and the area around the post was cordoned off afterwards as security forces conducted searches. Three soldiers were killed and two were injured in the attack. However, troops fired back and killed two terrorists, police said. This came a day after three terrorists of Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba outfit were neutralized in an encounter in Badgam district. India has long blamed Pakistan trains and infiltrates terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Meanwhile, China on Wednesday delayed a proposal by the United States and India at the UN Security Council to sanction Abdul Rauf Azhar, a top commander in the Pakistan-based Jashe Muhammad terror group. Beijing cited that it needed more time to study the case. Indian defense and foreign policy experts termed the move as China's double standards. So it shows that China is not serious about fighting terrorism. It may make uh, statements, but the real facts on the ground indicate that China has double standards. Because when it comes to Pakistan or Pakistani designated terrorists, it tries to create a mischief. The U.S. Treasury had designated Abdul Rauf Azhar in 2010, accusing him of urging Pakistanis to engage in militant activities and organize suicide attacks in India. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan has blamed that the coalition government has hatched a plan to create rifts between his party and the Pakistan army. The former Prime Minister's remarks came after the arrest of his close aide Shahbaz Gill over charges of sedition. Gill has been accused of inciting mutiny among the Pakistan army while speaking to a TV news channel. Pakistan's ousted Prime Minister and opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan on Wednesday blamed that the coalition government has hatched a plan to create rifts between his party and the Pakistan army. Khan's remarks in a virtual address came after his close PTI aide Shahbaz Gill was sent to a two-day police remand by a court in Islamabad over charges of sedition. Gill has been accused of allegedly inciting mutiny among the Pakistan army ranks. With his remarks on a TV news channel, Khan defended Gill and said the incumbent government had issues that the army and PTI were in fact on the same page. We have to say that 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 we have to say that. Meanwhile, Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah, while speaking during a TV interview, reiterated on Wednesday that the top PTI leadership will also be arrested if an investigation proves that Gill's anti-military narrative was determined by them. Criticism of the powerful military which has directly ruled the country for almost half its nearly 75-year history is seen as red line in Pakistan. Although it denies interference in politics, 
Reports suggest Imran Khan was ousted from Prime Minister's post in April after he had lately lost army support. Moving on, political activist Shabir Chaudhry has rejected Pakistan government's proposed 15 constitutional amendment, calling the move a part of Islamabad's imperialistic ambitions. He raised concern the legislation will revoke the special status of Pakistan-administered Kashmir while curtailing the rights of locals in the illegally occupied region. Political activist Dr. Shabir Chaudhry has urged the people of Pakistan-administered Kashmir to reject the proposed 15th constitutional amendment which he said is part of Pakistan's imperialistic ambitions and will revoke the special status of the region. Shabir said that Pakistan is eyeing to control the natural resources in the illegally occupied territory and the people should raise their voice against this naked aggression and imperialism. Protests have already erupted against the legislation that aims to recreate a defunct overarching Kashmir Council, which activists believe will deem the hold of Kashmiri political parties as anti-democratic. <laughs> Shabir blamed the local stooge governments in the region are only protecting Pakistani interests. Protests have also raged against heavy taxation on electricity and inflation in the region. Nepal's Foreign Minister Narayan Khadka arrived on a two-day bilateral visit to China on Wednesday where he held wide-ranging talks with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi to further cement ties. During the meeting, China announced a 15 billion rupees grant to Nepal to invest in projects selected by Kathmandu for the year 2022. China on Wednesday announced to provide 15 billion rupees to Nepal for the year 2022 to invest in various projects after Nepalese Foreign Minister Narayan Khadka held wide-ranging talks with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi to further strengthen the bilateral ties. Khadka, who arrived on a two-day visit to China's Qingdao, reiterated Kathmandu's unwavering commitment to the One China policy, according to the statement released by the Nepalese Foreign Ministry. He also assured Wang that the Nepali territory will not be allowed to be used for any activity against China. Both the ministers expressed their commitment to the timely implementation of the agreements signed and understandings reached during high-level visits in the past. They agreed to expedite the implementation of China-assisted projects in Nepal. Wang also announced 3 million RMB worth disaster relief materials as per Nepal's request. China will also provide Nepal with an additional 2 million RMB worth of medical items and logistics. Apart from these, China will provide additional COVID-19 vaccines and COVID-19-related medical assistance as much as Nepal may require. Nepalese Foreign Minister's visit to China comes amid the rising tension between Washington and Beijing. Analysts believe that Nepal may face a hard time balancing ties with the two world powers and continue to maintain its policy of non-alignment or not. More news from Nepal. Amid a heavy spell of rainfall, several areas in Nepal's Kathmandu Valley were inundated, throwing daily life out of gear on Wednesday. Vehicles waded through waterlogged roads while the massive downpour compelled some people to move out of their homes along with their belongings. The incessant rainfall also caused massive damage around the settlements on the banks of Bhagmati River. Police said that no human casualties were reported, but several homes and animal shelters were damaged near the river area in Lalitpur district. Flooding is an annual problem during the monsoon season in South Asia, but the impact is worsened by crumbling civic infrastructure, clogged drains and uncontrolled urban expansion. The monsoon rain, which normally begin in June and last until September, kill hundreds of people in mostly mountainous Nepal and parts of neighbouring India every year. Hit hard by the pandemic and economic mismanagement, Sri Lanka is experiencing its worst economic crisis in decades. Many Sri Lankans have been attempting to flee the country illegally and in the course are being arrested. Meenu Mekala and her husband gambled their family's life savings on a nearly 3,000-mile voyage aboard a rusting trawler with their two young sons. The decision ended in ruin. 
Aboard a Sri Lankan Navy vessel, a spotter sights a fishing trawler floating unusually low in the water, a possible sign that it is smuggling people. Officers navigating the vessel approach the trawler and search the men and the boat. But it is carrying little more than nets and fish. As more people look to escape the crisis hit country, patrols along the coast have become more regular. Leaving the country unofficially is illegal in Sri Lanka, but people have increasingly been willing to take that risk. Nearly a thousand people have been arrested this year to date, almost a record breaking number. Minu Makela's husband, Nirosh Ravendra, is among them. In late May, they boarded a 30 foot boat under the cover of night with their two teenage sons. They paid their life savings of $1,400 for the one-way trip to Australia. Their ship suffered a fuel problem and eventually it was intercepted by the Australian Coast Guard. Their family was sent back to Sri Lanka. Minu faces the charge of leaving the country from an unauthorized boat. Her husband is accused of an additional charge of assisting the logistics of the journey and now awaits trial in prison. <laughs> ඉතින් ගෙදර හම්බ කරන්නේ මහත්තයා අපි ජීවත් කරවන්නේ මහත්තයා දැන් මහත්තයා ඇතුලේ අපිට මහත්තයා නැතුව ඉතින් අපිට කණ්ඩ බොන්ඩ ආදායම් මාර්ගයක් නැහැ ඉතින් අපි නඩු කියන්න ඕනේ ලොයිස් ලට දෙන්න ඕනේ අනේන ගමන් බිමන් වියදම් ළමයි ස්කෝල වලට ඒ වගේ නිසා ලොකු ආර්ථික මේ ආර්ථික තත්ත්ව රටේ භයානකව තියෙන කාලෙක අපි තව ටිකක් අගාදර වැටුණා ඒකයි අපිට උනේ Hit hard by the pandemic and economic mismanagement, Sri Lanka is experiencing its worst economic crisis in decades. But Minu's family, with their passports cancelled for five years, won't be able to leave it anytime soon. In news from Bangladesh, growth in Bangladesh's garment export could drop to about 15% this year after an usually strong expansion of more than 30% in 2021. Industry leaders told Reuters on Wednesday as US and European customers grapple with cost of living pressures. The garment industry accounts for more than 80% of total exports for Bangladesh with sales to clients such as Walmart, Gap Inc, H&M, Zara and American Eagle Outfitters, some of which have already flagged weak sales as the customers prioritize basics. Bangladesh, the world's second biggest garment exporter after China, so exports soared 30.4 percent to 35.8 billion US dollars last year, the biggest one-year-on-year -year jump in about 25 years. BGMEA, Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers and Exporters Association data since 1994 shows a big jump in exports in a year is typically followed by slower growth in the next. The worry is rising input cost after Bangladesh on Saturday raised fuel prices by around 50% amid high international prices. Bangladesh last month became the third South Asian country after Pakistan and Sri Lanka to seek a loan from the International Monetary Fund as its foreign exchange reserves shrank and the trade deficit jumped. Indians celebrated the sibling festival of Raksha Bandhan with traditional fervor and gaiety on Thursday with women and girls tying sacred threads called Rakhis on the wrist of their brothers. The festival is celebrated as a mark of revered bondage between sisters and brothers. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also celebrated the occasion with daughters of his staff at his residence in New Delhi. On the occasion of Hindu sibling festival of Raksha Bandhan, women tied sacred threads called Rakhis on the wrists of security personnel at the Atari Vaga border, the road check post between India and Pakistan in India's northern Punjab state. Raksha Bandhan commemorates the bond between brothers and sisters and is celebrated with fervor and gaiety among people from different communities. On this day, the brother pledges to protect his sister's honor and gifts her as a token of the bonding. Rakhi Bandhan ke liye aaye hai, toh humare jitne bhi sainik bhai hai, unke saad, yaha ki bhehen hai, sainik bhehen hai, unke saad bhi hum Rakhi Bandhan ke, hume itna sukun mila hai, humari, meri sab sahel ya sab, meri group, bohut hi khush hai, kyunki aisa jo nazara hai yaha ka, Rakhi Bandhan ka, aur unke saad apna share karne ka, wo bohut hi badiya hai. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also participated in the celebrations. This was a special Raksha Bandhan celebration as he celebrated the festival with the daughters of staff working at the Prime Minister's office, including sweepers, peons, gardeners and drivers. 
Meanwhile, prisoners in northern Pathan court also celebrated the sibling festival. Sisters were seen tying rakis to their brothers imprisoned in Pathan court jail. They were permitted to meet their brothers on the occasion of Raksha Bandhan. Significantly influenced by the Hindu culture, Raksha Bandhan is observed on a full moon day of the holy monsoon month of Shravan. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.